Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Alana. So January 2023 is here, it's in full swing. And thank you again to Lisa from Sutton's Days who hosts this collaboration and she's invited me to join along. It's my first collaboration and I'm really grateful that she has included me in this great lineup of YouTubers, 30 days of videos, and it is going to be jam packed with fantastic recipes and techniques and lots of tips for canning. So thank you, Lisa. Uh, the collaboration has been sponsored by a company called Four Jars Canning Lids, and they have generously offered some prizes for this collaboration. And the first prize is a 21 quart All-American pressure canner plus 200 lids from Four Jars. The second prize is a gift basket with a $100 Visa card. Third prize is another gift basket with a $50 Visa card. And Lisa has offered a 23 quart Presto pressure canner as a fourth prize. So that's a wonderful lineup of prizes. And all you have to do is watch every video for the month of January, 30 videos, and make a comment because your comment could be randomly picked for one of these prizes. Lisa will go live January 31st at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and she will have all the dates of the videos in a, in a hat. She will choose the dates of the videos and then have a random comment picker choose a commenter to win a prize. So that is how you need to enter if you want to win these prizes. Also, if you're interested in Four Jars Canning Lids, Lisa has a promo code called Sutton's 10. You can get a 10% discount if you order some lids from four jars. Now they sent me an email and they wanted to send me some lids that I could use for my videos. Because of the holidays, I think the postal service has been a little bit slow and I've not received my lids yet. Um, that's okay. Uh, I'm positive they're fantastic and hopefully I'll have my lids by the time I do my second video. So I'll be able to show you then. But I have noticed that some of the other ladies who are in the States have theirs and you can go check out uh, their videos and they can show you the lids that they're using. I'm also going to give you a list of the YouTube channels that are participating in this collaboration and there's a great lineup. We have Sutton's Days, that 1870s homestead. We have Linda's Pantry, Cosmopolitan Cornbread, The Rustic Wife, Alderman Farms, Prepper Potpourri, Mouse Toes, Pike Creek Farm, The Miller Life Kitchen, Tuli Lou Creates, Fermented Homestead, Tess Cooks for You, Jenny's Scratch Made Kitchen, Victoria at a Modern Homestead, and Becoming a Farm Girl. So really great lineup. All right, so now all of that juicy information is out of the way. It's on to my video, and today I'm going to be making orange marmalade. This brings up a lot of memories from when I was little. My dad loved it. I actually didn't like it when I was little, but I think when I started watching Coronation Street, I would see them eating toast and marmalade and I, it just looks so good. So now I love it. I have everything laid out that I'm gonna need for the marmalade. I have navel oranges, a lemon, and some clementines. You can use a mixture of any citrus really if you like, but I'm using navel oranges, one lemon, and then I'm just gonna use the juice from these clementines. I have some of these that I wanna use up. So I wanna get about four cups of chopped fruit and juice. One packet of Cerdo pectin crystals, two and a half cups of water, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. And what I use this for is I'm going to simmer the shredded peel in this for about 20 minutes to soften the fruit and release any pectin that may be in the peel. I've got my pot that I'm going to be making the marmalade in and my canning pot. There is a rack at the bottom. I just use my rack for my prep for my pressure canner. You can use a jar lifter. See a picture of one right there. I do have one. I just find the jars wobble around a lot, so I just like to use a rack at the bottom. If you don't have a rack, you can just use a tea towel, anything to keep those jars up off of the bottom of the can of the canner. Um, I've got water filled to about there. Keep in mind you do want to have about an inch or two inches of water above your filled jars when you're about to process them. I also added a tablespoon of vinegar to my water because there's a little bit of sediment in the water and that will help um, keep it from settling on your jars. You can just wash that sediment off, but I just add a bit of vinegar. 
Next we have a jar lifter. I use a chopstick just to um, release any air bubbles that may be in your jam before you um, put the lid on. I have a candy thermometer here because um, I'm not following the recipe on the Serto pectin box exactly. I use more juice and fruit and less sugar than what it calls for. So I do want to ensure I'm going to have a proper gel set. Got my ladle, wooden spoon for stirring. I've got my um, canning funnel. I'm going to be using this to juice those clementines. And of course, I've got my sterilized jars and the lids and inserts ready to go. Um, and I'm going to be using a cheese grater to grate the peel on my citrus. I also have a clean cloth that I'm going to wipe the rims of the jars after I'm done filling them and a tea towel. You want to put a tea towel down to put your hot jars on after they're done processing. You don't want to put them on a cold counter because they may crack. When I make my marmalade, I don't really like a thick um, peel. I, I like it fairly thin and fine and so does my husband. So um, a lot of times people will take the skin off in sections and remove most of that white pith on the inside and then finally shred the, um, the skin. Or they'll use a potato peeler to cut wide pieces off of the, the peel, leaving most of that white pith behind. And definitely watch your knuckles. I have the peel shredded off of six, excuse me, seven navel oranges and one lemon. And I've used the cheese grater for that. And you can just see there's very, very little white pith in there, which will help with bitterness. We don't want a bitter marmalade. Um, again, if you like your, your peel a thicker shred, then by all means, cut it off and slice it however thick you like. Next, I'm gonna add two and a half cups of water and the baking soda, baking soda, not powder, and then add the shredded peel. I'm going to bring that to a boil with the lid on and then once it comes to a boil I'm going to simmer this um, these orange peels orange and lemon peels for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes I want them soft to go into my marmalade so once this comes to a boil I'll turn it down and let it simmer so let's come to a boil so I want to turn my stove top down to simmer and set a timer for 20 minutes Another thing that I'm quite particular about when it comes to my marmalade is leaving the membrane in my jam. So you know that, that membrane is in between the sections of fruit? I cut the sections of fruit out and then toss away the membrane into the compost. Um, most people will just take off the pith and then ch chop the fruit. Maybe it's because I don't soak it overnight, maybe that helps, but for me I just like to remove the sections of fruit from that membrane. So it is kind of fiddly, but it's worth it for me. So what I do is I cut the ends off of the orange and then cut that white pith off. So then I'm left with the orange like that. And this is what you're left with after you get the fruit from all of those membranes. So again, you can leave them in if you want, but I'm just particular about them. So um, I, after I'm done cutting up all the fruit out of the oranges, I'm going to squeeze these out and get all the juice and add it to my fruit. So I've got my lemons and oranges there. I am just going to squeeze a little bit of juice out of that as much as I can because there was some left in those membranes. Next, I'm going to juice these clementines. I just want to bring up the, uh, the fruit juice ratio a little bit to four cups, to so around four cups anyway. So this is the pulp left over from the fruit, and I've already juiced these clementines and saved those, those um, peels because you can make some citrus vinegar for cleaning or some um, citrus sugar or citrus oil. So those are great to save. And I'm going to throw the, um, the pith into the compost. Now this is the juice that I got from my clementines. Uh, it was probably about a cup maybe. 
I've got my fruit, the juice, and that's about three cups in this measuring cup here. And then I have the liquid and the peel. So all of that should be about four cups, maybe even a little bit more. So these are the shredded peels that have been simmering and there's still some water left in there. So I'm just gonna keep that and add my fruit and juice. Next, I'm gonna sprinkle in the Serto pectin crystals and give it a stir. And I'm gonna let that come to a boil and I'm gonna let it boil away for about 10 minutes. So this has been simmering away for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna add the sugar all at once. So make sure you stir it around and get that sugar all dissolved. And then we're gonna let this come to a full rolling boil again. And you wanna stir it, you know, quite often because you don't want the bottom to scorch. I have my stovetop set to number four. Now, because I'm not following the recipe from the Serto box, I have added more fruit and juice and less sugar. It may not set properly in the allotted time that it calls for in the recipe in the box. So that's why I use my candy thermometer. So the gel stage is around 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will be different if you are, are um, above sea level. I think it's every thousand feet above sea level, it goes down two degrees, I think, but double check on that one. So if you don't have a candy thermometer, you can actually do a little test. You can put a, uh, a little dish or a plate in the freezer, add a little bit of your jam and pop it back in the freezer and then take it out after a few minutes. And if it starts to wrinkle on the top or if it's gelled, you know it's ready to put into your jars. So this is almost up to temperature and I want to just keep stirring this down so it doesn't um, scorch on the bottom. And we are going to get the little dish from the freezer to see if it has gelled yet. So I'm going to add a little bit of the marmalade to a jar or to a dish from the freezer. I'm going to pop it back in there for a couple seconds. Okay, let's just test this here. finger and you can see it's wrinkling so the gel stage has been reached so I've just removed the marmalade from the stove top from the heat and I'm just gonna stir this down and you can skim off that foam I just usually stir it for a few minutes because um, it also stirring it for a little bit helps prevent floating fruit you know how your um, jam sometimes separates it's fine to eat like that, but this stage kind of helps that. Next, I'm going to fill these jars. I'm going to use my canning funnel so I don't make a mess. And I want to fill these to a quarter inch headspace. If you don't have um, a tool to measure the headspace, these rings on the jars here, the bottom one indicates one inch headspace, the middle one a half inch, and the top one indicates a quarter inch headspace. So you want to fill that quite high. And I'm gonna take my chopstick and just make sure there's no air bubbles. Look, I may need to readjust the headspace if there were air, air bubbles. And maybe a little bit. There we go. Wipe the rim of the jar. If there's any jam or anything on the, on the rim when you put the lid on, it may hinder the seal. Just put the lid on just slightly tighter and finger tight. I'll use my jar lifter and put this into the canner and the water is fairly warm in the canner. So you got my, I have my jars in the hot water bath canner and the water is, in my case, two inches above the lids and it needs to be at least one inch above the lids. So I'm gonna put the lid on here, turn it up to maximum. And when that comes to a full rolling boil, I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna shut the heat off. And I'm just gonna let that settle down a little bit so I don't get a steam burn. And then I'm going to remove the jars from the canner and put them on the tea towel. When you remove these from the canner, if there's water on the top of the lids, don't tilt them off, they'll just It'll just evaporate because you don't want to tilt the jam inside the jar and it could break your seal. So you want to leave these jars sitting on the counter for about 12 to 24 hours before you 
remove the rings and label them and put them on your pantry shelves. So this recipe doesn't make a lot compared to other jam recipes. It makes about four half pints, but there's lots of goodness packed in those pints. So that's it for me today, and I'm glad you came along with me, and be sure to check out the other videos uh, for the January 2023 collaboration, and I will leave the link below to that playlist, and I'll leave a link below to previous year's playlist as well, so you can get all the information from all of those great videos and YouTube channels. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me today, and if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you again next time.